Jerry, I came by today to talk with you because you were our principal of Novato High School um, from 1985 to 1999. And um, as an educator, I I've never opposed approving a, a school bond um, as a citizen, but I was surprised as an educator um, that you also think Measure G is not a good bond, that the kids need their school money, which Novato will, voters will probably give them down the road, but this is the wrong bond vehicle. Can you explain to me why you feel strongly? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I have never opposed uh, a bond measure in the past, a uh, school bond measure. I've gone out and walked and done all the work, hanging up signs and the rest of it. Right. But this bond measure is very significantly different. Uh, it's too much money for too long a period of time, and the money is directed at the wrong, uh, at the wrong target. Uh, we, when we, so they're buying stuff rather buying than student stuff learning. And, and promoting the, the um, professional development that teachers need to be able to effectively use the new equipment. Um, so there's been lots of cases where computers have sat in a classroom unused for years and years or down at a district workout, uh, right. uh, warehouse. So this one, for, from my perspective, is um, the, the major flaw is that the district is not spending any money on professional development. So they're spending a lot on construction for construction people to make a lot of money out of this bond, but they're not putting much of that money behind teacher training or getting the education into our students. Yeah. 20 years ago, the district successfully passed a parcel tax measure and that measure was used uh, primarily for uh, computer technology and introducing that at the 14 schools. So fortunately, we were given a, a deal, a good deal of latitude to be able to implement it at Novato High School in the way we saw fit. And the first thing we needed to do was find out who knew the most about computer technology. And it was our two business teachers, Bob Oconee and Marilyn Isherwood. Mm -hmm. They were the leaders on this. They developed the curriculum. Uh, we scrambled together to get furniture so that we wouldn't have to spend money on that. And we could spend it all on computer technology. And they got a class up and running uh, within a year of the time the measure, the partial tax measure passed. And again, I think the key points are get the people who know what they're doing to be leading it. Have a plan. Be supportive. Uh, you needed to put professional development money behind it. You needed to give some staff time uh, so that teachers right. would be able to talk. <clears throat> uh, all of those things are critical. It's not just throwing stuff. It's just Not just throwing bond throwing money. At, uh, at a pile of computers. Right, at a pile of computers yeah. or um, fixing, fixing some roof leaks, which are important, mm -hmm. but it's about student learning, and this bond does not dedicate itself in a good explanative way of student learning. Well, and, and there's two good examples of this at, at, at San Marin High School. You know, San Marin High School, that they, they've self-reported. One-third of the teachers at San Marin High School say that student misbehavior interferes with student learning. Those new teachers need professional training. They need training in classroom management. They need administrators going in there, evaluating them, giving them concrete suggestions right. for improvement. Right. That's uh, certainly the first part of that is not happening, and the second part of it is not terribly effective because it's still a major concern. And as a citizen, I have a neighbor, a young neighbor, uh, with a new family, and she taught, a young woman taught at San Marin High School, and had to leave San Marin to go to San Rafael to make $25,000 more in order for her to afford to live in this area. So our Novato teachers continue to be terribly underpaid um, compared to other people in our region, yes. which is really a shame. Yeah, exactly. Even, even uh, 20 years ago, I was writing letters of recommendation for young teachers that were starting off that were successful at Novato High School to go to schools in the TAM district, Redwood and um, Drake or two that, are, that I have in mind. And they were making, at that point, $10,000 a year more. Now it's 25000 according yes. to this lady. And so the, the, the resources, we need to address that problem. And Measure G, there's no money in that $222 million bond that goes to 
increasing more teachers to hire or increasing teacher pay. Is that right? Or Yeah, absolutely. Or in, in providing professional development for teachers who are struggling. Right. In addition to it's this, all stuff. It, yeah. This is this is this is the key thing. It's the soft money, but the crucial money to make the system work. And it's borrowing, it's it's sucking up eighty percent of our total borrowing capacity in one fell swoop, which means these other things, two hundred twenty two million. There's no new schools in this. It's not like we're building any new schools, okay, or that we're hiring new teachers or increasing pay for our teachers. Um, this is just too much money at one time and endangers our kids' future for when we may need to build a new school or hire more teachers. They won't have the borrowing capacity. Is or, that right? Or to introduce new technology. Right. Absolutely. Uh, right. you, you've captured it. Too much money for too long a period of time. And inflexible spending. And inflexible spending. And again, uh, with in terms of student learning, Sam Marin has gone through serious problems in that they're not taking their, their student test scores and using them to improve instruction. They are not. They acknowledge in writing in their own self-study report that they do not use student data to change to improve instruction. And this is another uh, failure on the part of the leadership of the district. It's the superintendent and the board of trustees. And when I asked them about that, uh, sent them emails, no response, went down to a board meeting, pointed out that the, the inconsistency between their goals of engaging the community, being responsive. The response is, we'll get back to you in two months. Future, those kids are important. And I don't like Measure G as a voter and as a taxpayer, but I, the kids need money for schools, okay? And we'll all support the kids getting their school money, but Measure G is a bad bond the way it's written. The school board needs to lose on Measure G and come back within six to 12 months with a new, better bond that the town can really support so the kids get their school money. How do you feel? Is that a how you absolutely feel? Absolutely. Five years with realistic goals, uh, a, a smaller amount of money, that makes sense. And with milestones, where the voters and the taxpayers and the parents particularly can see actual improvements in test scores, student learning, academics, and of course facilities improvement. Schools do need improvement in facilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are some of my thoughts. Yeah. Again, we need a more responsive superintendent, a more responsive board. They need to realize that we have to spend money on professional development. You have to give teachers time uh, to, to, to implement these uh, new programs and, and the use of these new technologies. It's not going to happen overnight, but that needs funding as well. It needs to be a priority.